What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. I am very excited to bring you 3.0. Finally, we have the Age of Sorcery in Conan Exiles. And in this video, I'm going to show you a high level view of sorcery. Now I will show you where to learn sorcery, both on the Exiled Lands and the Isle of Sipta, but I'm going to leave that to the end of the video, so anybody that wants to find it naturally, you can do that, but if you want the spoilers, that'll be at the end of the video. And I have an absolute ton of content coming. Like I said, this is going to be a high level view video, but I will be diving into each one of these sections later on in future videos. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel for further content. Jumping right into this, you are going to find sorcerers around the map on the Exiled Lands. They are all the way down at the New River and all the way north as well. As you come across these sorcerers and you kill them, they have the potential of dropping a map. That map is going to lead you to the cave that I'm going to show you at the end of the video. Now they are not guaranteed to drop a map, so you may have to kill multiple sorcerers before you find that map. Let's go ahead and kill these two guys and we'll see what they dropped. You can see they also dropped the Skelos Occultist Master Scroll. This is the scroll that will teach you the items from the Grave Matters event. So if you missed out on that event and you want to be able to craft that armor, this is going to teach you that. They also have the chance of dropping either a failed sorcery page or a regular sorcery page. Now a failed sorcery page is needed to craft sorcery spell pages. However, you can just find the sorcery spell page on the dead bodies of these sorcerers. Additionally, as you're coming across these areas where you find the sorcerers, you should be looking on their tables because sometimes you will find a sorcery spell page sitting right on their table and you will need these to unlock different sorceries. Now, in case you're wondering about these sorcerers, they are able to be knocked out. So you can knock these guys out, take them back and put them on your flamaturgy bench. So let's cover the sorcerers real quick. You can see there is a one, two, three, and then a named sorcerer. However, it doesn't matter right now which sorcerer you use. So level one or level four, they are all going to give you the same recipes. So if we load the level one on there, you see we get research with this recipe, and then we get research with this recipe. And if I swap that out to the named person, you can see the same thing, research with this recipe and research with this recipe. There is no reduction in resources. So grab whatever sorcerer you come across and toss them on the bench so that you can actually research the spell pages. Now you are going to need a total of 14 spell pages in order to unlock all of the sorcery. And the recipes for the sorcery are linear. So I've been through this a couple times. It, it has always been the same linear path in order to unlock all those sorcery recipes. Now, I'm not going to list those in this video. I have that on my website. There's a link in the description of this video if you want to see what resources you should be stocking up on in order to complete these recipes. You can head over there and see that list. The other thing that's in here that you can see is the Tome of Karak. This is obtained when you go to the cave and learn sorcery. So that is a singular location. Like I said, I'll show you that at the end of the video. Additionally, when you learn that, you will also receive your first arcane staff. You can see that here. This one is from the Battle Pass. I actually unlocked this particular skin for it. I think it's really cool and it didn't take me long to get to that point. The other thing that the Flamaturgy Bench does is it will allow you to change a look for a weapon. Now, this only works with weapons that you know how to make. This will not work with legendary weapons. And they have to be the same type. So you cannot put a short sword frame on a long sword or a two-handed sword. You have to use two short swords or two daggers, two axes, and you have to know how to make them both. 
Now the Thaumaturgy Bench is going to teach you not only sorcery spells, but it's also going to teach you other crafting stations for sorcery. So let's jump into those right now. You are going to learn the Sacrificial Stone. Now the Sacrificial Stone is where you're going to bring NPCs to either drain their blood or to capture their soul. And it doesn't matter what type of NPC you load in here, it will take any type of NPC. So it doesn't have to be a fighter or an archer. You can load an alchemist or an armor or a blacksmith in here and complete these rituals. Now let's move on to the Shallow Grave. This is another crafting bench where you are going to bring unconscious thralls and load them in here. However, this one is particular. It has to be a thrall that you can place in the world. So a fighter, an archer, a dancer, a bearer, those types of thralls can be loaded in this bench. Then you are able to raise the dead and you end up with a follower that's called a resurrected corpse. Now I will deep dive on this particular station because there are some things that you should know about the types of thralls that you should be putting in here to get the best result for your resurrected corpse. The next crafting station that we're going to cover is the circle of power. Now this is going to allow you to get followers, demonic followers, from this as well as some equipment items and i will have a video covering all of the abyssal followers and then i'll have another video where i talk about the equipment like the bow and the armor and the mall i'll have that coming soon what I do want to show you is this summon corpse. So we've all been there at one point in time where you end up dying in a location where you can't get back to your body. Or for whatever reason you get called away for dinner and you're not able to return and get your loot. So what you're actually able to do with this is use the summon corpse option. And it requires one sacrificial blood in a flask 50 brimstone and one glass flask and we can actually craft that what you're going to see is it actually brings my corpse right here so that i can loot my body and not have to worry about traveling back up to get it now it does it give you quite a bit of corruption and it also gives you the tainted additive now the tainted additive is that you are unable to cleanse a certain amount of your corruption and you are actually resistant to cleansing your corruption but there you go you can see my body there came right to my base that is a super cool feature the last station that we have is the transitory stone so you can see that here this is what actually allows you to teleport from point to point so i actually have another one that is out on the map and if i interact with that it's going to transport me to that other stone and you can see this is at the mounds of the dead this additionally gives you demonic energies which will not allow you to step back in and transport back immediately it is not a long cooldown it's probably about five to ten seconds so it doesn't take long then you can step back in and travel again you are also given the tainted debuff when you do this so there is an amount of your health and stamina bar that is corrupted and cannot be cleansed for a certain amount of time Okay, so now I'm going to give you a high-level view of casting spells. I will do an in-depth video covering each spell and the damage that it does and whether I feel like it's worth using on a regular basis or not. Now, in order to cast spells, you are going to need these resources. One of these resources is going to be required for you to cast spells. So the lowest level one is the burlap pouch. The next level or second tier is the cloth pouch. And the last one, the third tier, is the leather pouch. So all you have to do is equip your arcane staff and click the light attack button. You can see then the stones come up and you're able to choose from those. Now I have all the sorcery unlocked. You may only have one or two stones when you open this up for the first time. We're going to go ahead and choose this one, shape the raw forces of nature and reality itself. We'll click on that. 
then you will get a set of other options. Now you can see this option actually requires me to have 20% corruption. And the highest one that you're going to find will require you to have 40% corruption or more. Now I'm gonna go ahead and summon the frozen bridge. This requires one burlap pouch to be in your inventory. Now, obviously I am on flat ground, so not a very exciting cast, but that is the way that you are going to use the sorcery in Conan Exiles. Now you guys have probably noticed that I've fully corrupted Phoenix in this video and you didn't get to see what she looks like corrupted. That's because I hid my corruption level before I started filming this video. If you guys want to see Phoenix completely corrupted, what I need on this video is a thousand likes. If we get to a thousand likes, I will show you Phoenix fully corrupted. All right, guys, so at this point in time, I am going to spoil where you find sorcery on both the Exiled Lands map and the Isle of Sipta. So if you don't want to see that, if you want to find it on your own, go ahead and click off the video now. If you're still here, let me show you where to go on the Exiled Lands map. So you are gonna come right over here to Shellback Hollow. You can see that location is in 5E and you are going to have to fight your way into this location. I'm not going to because I am in God mode and I am cloaked. So I am just going to run past or fly past all these enemies and head out the backside of this cave. Once you get to this point, there are no more enemies. You're just going to run up here. And as you can see, there is a book right here. You're going to interact with that. That is going to give you five burlap patches. That is going to give you the arcane staff. It's going to give you the tome of Karak. It is going to teach you the flamaturgy bench and you are going to learn frozen bridge and reveal corruption as your first two spells. If you decide to look around, you can come right over here and cast a frozen bridge to get to the other side. On the other side, you will find five different chests. So there's one there, there is one here, one here, that's three, here's four, and then the fifth one is going to be right back here. And then there's actually this one as well that requires you to have a skeleton key to open it. This is going to give you a legendary item. Do keep in mind that all the time that you are in here, you are gaining corruption. Now, what if you get back to this point and you don't want to cast another ice bridge? This is actually all climbable, guys. So what you could do is instead of casting the bridge, you could just jump down and then climb up. But everything in here is climbable, so you really don't have to worry about falling down there or even casting that bridge. Okay, guys, so... You guys have all probably been here before on the Isle of Sipta. We are right over here at River Watch Keep. It's on the line of 9 and 10 in N, right there, River Watch Keep. And you see this tower with that gate. What you actually want to do is go over the edge here, and there is a cave entrance that's been added here. This cave entrance actually does not have any enemies in it. So unlike the one on the Exiled Lands map, this one is completely empty. So we are just going to run to the back and you can see it is the exact same cave as the one in the Exiled Lands. You are just going to run up here and interact with this book here. This one additionally has the same chest set up in the back. So you can see all the chests are in the same location. There's that one over there. There's this one here. And then additionally, there is this one back here. So that's the two locations that you need to come to. All right, so that is the high overview of sorcery. I wanted to keep this video as short as possible to just give you the glimpse of what is coming with update 3.0, and then I will deep dive each one of these sections in future videos. You guys let me know in the comment section below, what are you looking forward to? What questions do you have about the age of sorcery? 
I'd like to thank all my YouTube members for your continued support. Y'all are absolute legends. If you'd like to become a legend, there's a button that says join on this page. Click that for details. There's two videos on the screen. Click one of those to watch next and I'll meet you over there.